Okay, I promise was, this one will be shorter. So Amy used to tell me um, it is so hard to keep these uh, stories short because if it goes over a certain amount of time, she can't text me her story. So that's how she kind of submits her story to me is she'll record it and then she'll text it to me and then I do all the uploads and all the behind the scenes stuff. But if it's over a certain amount of time, she can't text it to me. She has to do all the uploading herself and that, you know, creates more work for her. And as a volunteer, you know, we don't want um, our volunteers doing extra work if they don't have the time to do it. Um, so, so anyway, well, that just took up 39 seconds explaining. <laughs> Let me tell you a quick little story. So um, I had this client um, out of Washington State, and I call her the, uh, the story of the pearl necklace because it just touched me so much. So she comes to me. This has been several years ago. Um, but I never forget her. I know her first and last name. Like I check in with her every once in a while just to see how things are going. So brief recap, look, I solved the case. We're always going to tell you about cases that we pretty much solved and what it was about that case that stood out to us. What stood out to us is her dad is getting up in years. He is um, with a woman that um, is his second wife. Um, my client, her mom and her dad, uh, had an affair, I believe, while they were both married. However, the second wife was not um, married to him at the time. He does have four children um, with a wife. I don't remember if it's his first wife or the second wife, and I'm not going to go look. Um, let's just say he's got four children. Um, and so he here, here's what stood out to me. Once I solved the case, um, the... The dad lived seven miles from my client, just like it was almost a straight shot to his house. You know, she said, she said to me, it's, that's just across the park and just down the way. And I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. So come to find out, she had been talking to her uh, great aunt. So it was the dad's aunt. Details escape me. Or the dad's sister, because he's already old, so I don't think his, his aunt would be living. So it's his dad's sister, okay? Told you I'm not going to be as good as Amy at this. <laughs> okay, so she's been talking to her, her, her dad's sister all along, but they didn't understand the relationship. They didn't know what that relationship was, right? It was his half, her half-aunt, because he had a different dad. That's right. He had a different dad. So it was her half aunt, and she she thought probably it was a first cousin or something, but it turned out that it was her brother, and he was a half brother. So she'd been talking to her, and after I made, sorry about the dog, after I uh, made the made the identification of the biological father, um, I didn't realize you could pause. Okay, where was I? Sorry about the dogs. Um, the half sister, which was my my client's half aunt was telling her after I solved the case that, you know, she talks to him every single week on Thursdays. And they talk for, you know, a couple of weeks or a couple of hours every, every week. And so she said, don't reach out to him because I'm concerned about his wife. So remember, a, a wife can make or break your story, right? So if the wife's not on board with the story, it's not going to happen until that wife gets on board. All right. So anyway, the sister, the half sister broke the news to her brother that he had a baby um, and who the mother was. And he said, she was just the love of my life. I will never forget her. She'd already, she's already passed. I'll never forget her. And I'm so happy to have a daughter. Um, but we can't tell my kids right now. I'm going to sit down with my wife and I'm going to tell her. And the wife was like, no, we're not telling the kids right now. You know, we don't know who this person is. Essentially, she's a stranger to us. So it took a while, but she did finally get to meet her dad. But she actually took over the Thursday calls. So he would call his sister on Thursdays, and he would call her on Thursdays. Um, and so they created a bond. She did eventually meet him. And when she went, this is what, what bonded me to this case forever. When she went to meet him, she was wearing a pearl necklace. Unbeknownst to her, she knew that it was her mother's pearl necklace. And when she went to meet him, he said, I gave your mom that necklace. And all these years, her mother had held on to that necklace. And she got it when mom passed. She just happened to be wearing it that day that she met her dad. So tell me if you believe in angels like I do. Because mom had a hand in that.
Mom absolutely had a hand in that. And it has been, I would say, three years now since I solved the case. And the last time I checked in with her, she had finally started having some communications with her siblings. And I believe she had met two of them. So nothing happens overnight. Just give it grace. Give it time for people to absorb, right? What you've known potentially all of your life like that you're adopted or your donor conceived, a half sibling or an aunt or a grandparent, they're just finding this out. So you got to give them some time to kind of absorb everything. So how's your Tuesday going?